27 April 2023, fresh rounds of cooling measures again. Of course, this is like uh, almost the 15th round. This is the fourth time additional buyer stamp duty rates have been raised since the measure's introduction more than a decade ago. We're going to talk about the additional buyer stamp duty that has doubled up to 60% for foreign investors on our residential properties in Singapore. Let's go. Now, if you have not seen our article, uh, we released this on uh, the 27th April. Head on to propertylimbrus.com or you can just Google propertylimbrus cooling measures. You should be able to locate this particular article. We shared uh, insights as well as a, a key summary. So basically, let's head on to have a look at what has happened. So basically, this uh, I would say is nothing new in the sense that we already had so many different rounds of cooling measures. Just have a look at, of course, all the past history of cooling measures based on this particular table and chart that we had. So um, the most significant one was, of course, all the way from number one that started from 2009 after Lehman Brothers all the way until today. And of course, the very last round that we had was in September 2022, where we had a stress test increase. And of course, there was also some cooling measures on uh, GB properties in the sense that when people downgrade from prior property towards HGB, you have to have a 15 months cooling period, so on and so forth. Not forgetting for the fact that 15 February 2023 this year, we also had a round of marginal increase in buyer stamp duty in terms of non-residential and residential in different quantum ranges. So just a quick recap, this is the chart. Basically, first one and a half million, one and a half to three million, three million onwards, so on and so forth. Marginal increase from the standard 4% minus 15,400 to 5% and 6%. Of course, there's a calculation method because it's a tiering system as well. So of course, for this, we call it a little bit like a wealth tax version because only larger quantum purchases, you are being affected with the initial buyer stamp duty. But if you buy anything, that is like maybe below $5 million, you will not see that much of a significant difference, though there's still an increment in the overall buyer stamp duty. Now, we want to come back to this and have a look at why is there this doubling effect when it comes to the foreigners' uh, chase of a residential property because when we look at this, it's a one-off jump. That means that any foreign investors that want to buy our residential property, whether it's the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, every single property, 60%. That will mean that if you want to buy a $2 million property, the 60% will be a $1.2 million additional buyer stamp duty tax. So a $2 million property will then become $3.2 million. If uh, somebody wants to buy a $3 million property, they will then have to pay a 60% of it, which is $1.8 million. And the total until will then become from $3 million to $4.8 million. So of course, Will this deter foreign buyers buying our residential property? Firstly, let's have a look at the percentages because if we were to look at the percentages, maybe that can tell us a little bit more on uh, why our government are doing this. But before we have a look at the percentages, let's have a look at the price acceleration speed first. So usually, we want to look at two things. Number one, is it because there's a huge significant volume of foreign purchases into the residential market that caused this spike in the ABSD action from our policymakers? Or is it because of the speed of acceleration of the pricing on this end? So two parts, acceleration of price or volume of transactions. You, usually when we look at this, we can have a better understanding. So what has happened was that uh, in fourth quarter 2022, non-landed rose by only 0.3%, but in quarter one, it rose by 2.5%. Now, the larger increment, I would say, will be a landed property, 0.6% to 5.7%. And then when we look at this, in totality, basically, 2022 Q2, 3.6%, increment in condos and apartment. 2022 Q3, 4.4%. And then 2022 Q4, 0.3%. Now, I would say that Q4 was a very different season because 2022 Q4 last year, that was the entire period of revenge traveling because everything opened up. A lot of people traveled. 
perhaps that has caused a dip in transaction volume. That has, of course, resulted in the fact that there was no much significant change. But maybe underlying this quarter one of 2023, there was some data that our policymakers have that has then resulted in them wanting to take this particular action because I'm not sure maybe they have the data on the influx of liquidity or the number of interest from foreign buyers into our residential market and forecasting this with the very backdrop that our personal opinion is that our condos and apartments supply is actually in a very undersupply situation. Even though we have 47 new launches this year, which resulted in about 10 odd thousand um, of new units being introduced, but the totality of our supply is still at 340 to 350,000 units. And if we were to, of course, look at the transaction. So when we look at the acceleration, it's very clear if you look at the flash estimate right here, from URA, the plateau was Q4 2022, and then there was a sharp acceleration back to Q1 2023. And if this were to go on, what's going to happen to our private property price index is that it will then continue in an upward trend to end up with 2023. If every quarter is three to four percent, we'll end up with about 12 to 16 percent by the end of 2023. What would this then mean? If let's say local Singaporeans will have the aspiration to want to move up to a condo or apartment or even a landed property, will this then be something that Singaporeans will be priced out? I think if we look at the statement being released by our policymakers, they feel that uh, have to take this equation out of the picture because it seems that underlying demand from Singaporeans ourselves is already very strong. And if we do not do anything to the foreigners investors demand into the residential market, these two components being added together is going to create an even faster acceleration. So perhaps by taking this equation out, it can then of course allow the local demand to take shape itself, even though I believe it will still have an increment, but perhaps when it will not be at a 3% rate, maybe at a 1 over percent or maybe 0 point something percent rate. And perhaps that's what policymakers are looking at. Now, let's go to the second chunk that I was talking about. First chunk, we look at acceleration. Now let's look at the percentages and the quantity of transaction Q1 2023 by nationality. If I were to go to real lease, I look at 2022 April. So over a 12 months period, 2022 April, 2023 April, I look at all regions in Singapore. I look at all nationality and residential status, apartments and condos for new launch, resale and subsale. These are the numbers that we're looking at. So you can see that there was a sharp rise in the company level buying residential properties. Now, what are this company level? Take note, for a company to buy, firstly, you do not have leverage power because in terms of LTV loan, you can only take a 10% loan. When you talk about company level, the only people with buying power right now, of course, if let's say a Singapore company would use their company to buy residential property, of course, they can do that, but they have to pay a ABSD of 35% if they are an entity. Largely, though we don't have data, it's quite obvious that this 944 belongs to family officers, very likely, because family officers, they have the purchasing power. And of course, what do we mean by family officers? It means that foreign investors, they come in, they set up family office, they use this entity to purchase a residential property. So over the whole 12 months period, 944 transactions were done by companies, very likely family officers. They have biked the bullet and paid 35% ABSD on top of that 4 to 5% buyer stamp duty. That means in totality, the tax that they pay is about 40%. And now it's being revised to 65%. Secondly, foreigners' quantity of transactions over the past 12 months, there were 321 China foreign investors that bought in, 1,108 PRs. And of course, is this round of ABSD being targeted at PRs? Not so, because for PRs, the first purchase is still at 5%. Singaporean's first purchase is still at 0%. So we know that it's being targeted at foreign investors as well as company level, because if not, our government wouldn't have included entities and trustee, and they have a similar doubling effect. Of course, uh, there's also a slight change plus about 3% for Singapore's second property. Hopefully, that can curb a little bit. And uh, third property, 5% increment. PR, of course, has a 5-5% five, 5 change. But 
first property is not affected. This means that the focus is still on the fact that our policymakers will want the prior property market to be largely for primary residents. That means for your own stay, your own use, your own consumption and to curb investment demand. Now coming back to this, what we can also deduce is that if we look at the country level, US also has a significant entry point because there were 273 US foreign investors that bought into residential properties in the last 12 months. But US is one of the five countries with ABSD tax exemption. 273 is out of the picture because they are not taxed with additional buyer stamp duty. And what has been the most significant group, of course, there's this foreign group which uh, is not classified. China investor 3 to 1, the largest percentage. And of course, I think it is this group here, which are the family offices group that are buying into residential property. So with this, this perhaps based on the underlying data is because the strength of these buyers are different from local buyers. Family offices, as mentioned, they technically don't need to take a loan. Most likely, full payment for every singular property have the ability to pay the 35% now and they are still buying. And of course, I think perhaps they want to take this to a different level and raise it up to 65%. Hopefully, it can then create a little bit of friction and delay in the amount of our investors but touching the residential properties. Nothing has been changed on additional buyer stamp duty towards commercial properties. At this point in time, commercial properties still has no additional buyer stamp duty and no seller stamp duty for pure commercial properties. And of course, industrial property is different because purchasing no ABSD but exit point, three years seller stamp duty. So nothing has changed then. This is all on the residential market. And I think uh, in terms of the focus, it will really be ensuring that Singaporeans are not priced up. So let's dive into a little bit recap as well. So we chatted about this chart before. Now this chart basically talks about the total amount of condos and apartments in Singapore. At this point in time, you look at the red bar. Red bar is based on data number three. It means the amount of private residential units owned by Singaporeans. That stands at 262,000. When you look at this data, basically what this means is that 67,000 are being owned by foreigners and PRs and then 19,000 are being owned by company level. So this data, when we look at it, very clear cut, it tells us that in totality, we have about 350,000 plus minus number of private residential units and we are talking purely about non-landed, that means condos and apartments. And if you look at the percentage, 262 vis-a-vis -vis 350, it means that 262 divided by 350, we're talking about a 74% ownership of condos and apartments by Singaporeans, 25% foreigners, PRs, and companies. And I think policymakers do not want that 25% to balloon up to maybe 30, 35, 40, 50%. They want majority of the private residential properties to still be owned by Singaporeans so that at least it's like um, an aspiration kind of target and goal that Singaporeans can fulfill when they want to upgrade from the HDB apartments towards the private property market. So this is something that has happened. Of course, head on to read our article and we talk a little bit more in depth. Of course, over the next Nuggets on the Go series, we're going to talk a lot about this as well and uh, potentially what is going to happen to the private property market in the next three to four quarters. But of course, my personal thoughts and opinion is that definitely when we talk about the market that sort of depends on the foreigners investors buying power to enter into largely possibly high quantum CCR properties. Maybe we're going to see a slight dip and plateau in the amount of transaction for them for a little while before foreign investors get used to it. Maybe foreign investors right now, they're looking at alternatives already. Maybe they will dive into commercial properties or maybe they will start to look at other countries. Will this have an impact? Definitely have an impact on foreign investors especially the high net worth individuals. But maybe the ultra high net worth would not be so affected if let's say they are really looking at Singapore as a safe haven and store of wealth location because maybe they are already planning to bring in 10, 20, 30, 40 million to buy up properties here as a store of value. And they might just think, okay, let me just buy the bullet for one, two properties and we see how it goes. But uh, I would say perhaps high net worth people with the range of maybe five to 10 million, they might take a step back 
ultra high net worth, maybe they will still buy, but it really depends on their investment objective or whether is it a store of wealth or whether is it, are they looking for returns. And, uh, but most importantly, when we look at this, it also then gives us sort of like um, a little bit of deep into the fact that will this affect the overall price index? Because new launches, 2018 or 2022, this were the percentage purchases by foreign investors. And of course, I think 2022, we saw a sharp rise from 4% to 7%. So this is something, of course, that uh, will be a red flag. And then resale sort of maintained at about 3% over the last two years, 2021 and 2022. Overall, 2022 was at 5% for foreign investors. Perhaps Q1 signaled something very differently. And then that caused action to be taken. Now, in totality, when we look at this, we're still looking at majority Singaporeans purchasing and of course, PRs purchasing as well. In fact, PRs, I think is quite a huge percentage. 18% is no small amount based on the 600,000 PRs that we have in Singapore compared to 77% based on 3.5 million Singaporeans. So 77% was transacted by 3.5 million Singaporeans, but just 600,000 PRs already transacted 18%. This shows that PRs, the moment they get their status as a permanent resident in Singapore, because the ABS, because there's, the ABSD is only 5%, that propelled them to buy rather than rent. So these are just some key statistics and demographics and behaviours that uh, we can roughly see from this two set of figures. And um, when we go back to the white paper population chart, which we always like to refer to, Basically, uh, it's not easy to attain PR nowadays in Singapore because when we look at the white paper, the significant difference right here is that it seems that PR status is going to stagnate. It seems that uh, PR's growth projection is not in the papers in the sense that there's going to be like five to 600,000 PRs over the next seven years. It's, going to be, it's not going to be a significant amount. If that's the case, then of course, um, I think the 5% ABS is going to likely remain at that. There's not going to be like a lot of risk in terms of unless like suddenly our government is going to allow a lot more PRs to be taken. Of course, on the ground, what we've heard and understand from a lot of our partners as well as, as our clients is that it's very hard to apply for a PR right now. It's a long time to, to get PRs. We'll also be surprised to see that uh, in terms of the direction of nationality, you can see that... Um, uh, nationality based on this figure, the amount of Singapore PRs that has bought into properties, 1108 from investors from China is actually quite a significant amount. In fact, the total amount right here, this has the largest percentage, 0.1108, followed by Malaysia at 788. And in quarter one of 2023, Basically, you will still see that the majority of transactions are being done by Singaporeans at 3,457 caveats being lodged in Q1 2023, 879 PRs, 310 foreign investors, 26 from companies in totality. Q1 for condos and apartments, 2023 is at 4,672, which usually by the end of the year, that's the normal case because usually by the end of the year, you're going to see resale transactions hovering at about 10,000, two launches, probably eight to 10,000. Usually we end up with about 18 to 20,000 in totality. Last year for lender properties, we end up at about 1,008, Averagely, they always do at about 1,006 to 2,000. So that is basically how the transaction volume will evolve. But I think for this round, my personal opinion is the, uh, the re-acceleration of prices again that policymakers have to slow it down. If not, in terms of escalation amount, if we were to look at the amount of percentage gain from 2012 to 2023 for lender properties, but of course lender properties are out of picture for this context because this is targeted at condos and apartments. Lender properties are out of reach for foreign buyers unless on Sentosa Cove, but lender properties has grown by 62.4%. And when we look at lended properties over the last two years, sorry, has grown by 40%. And when we look at non-lended, 2012 to 2023, 75.4%, but just in the last three years, 22.4%, which is pretty significant. What this means is that if this continues for another maybe 12% this year, we're going to have a totality of about 35% over the last four years when we end 2023. 
And uh, if this continue to go on with every year with a 15%, 15%, 15%, what is going to happen in five years time is that if it accelerates by 75% growth, you compare that back with what we have grown for the last 11 years from 2012 to 2023, total was 75.4%. But if we allow this speed to happen, that means 3 to 4% per quarter, 15% per year, in five years time, it will be another 75%. So it was 11 years, 75% growth. But if we allow this speed to continue, it will be another 75%. But now this time around, it's not for 11 years. It's going to be for five years, half the speed. And that will bring us to 150% growth in about 16 years. 75% in five years, 75% in 11 years. If you can see that difference, I think that is where our policymakers is concerned about if this acceleration continues forward. So, to end of this episode, I think uh, what is important is that sometimes, of course, when we look at this news, then we will start to think about, hey, then all the more I should wait because I want to wait for price to, to drop. But to end of this episode and to summarize it for you, will ABSD cause the private property price to drop? My personal forecast as well as opinion is that it might slow down the acceleration or it might cause a slight stagnation for a period of time for higher quantum condominiums and apartments. Probably five, six, seven, eight million dollars onwards kind of range. But ranges below five million, I don't think the impact will be that big because the majority of purchases, 95% are still done by Singaporeans and PR, 77% last year by Singaporean, 18% last year by PRs. Majority of the action is still done locally. Only 5% of the foreigners have purchased into the residential market for 2022. And thus, I think perhaps the higher quantum bond will be slightly stagnated, maybe in the CCR portion for very high quantum ones. But ranges maybe 3, 4, 5, 6, or even 6, 7 million, I don't think it will have much of an impact because most of the action are still done locally. So what does this mean? This means that uh, if you can understand statistics on a probably a more micro level, then it's easier to make a decision. But end of the day, I think the most bulk of the action was still done, done by Singaporeans. And we're already going into a year of almost like a full-on year of 4% interest rate starting from 2022 until today. There's still no deceleration of price. I think prices will still grow on a gradual speed. But I think what our government is looking at is instead of going 3 to 4%, can we just grow maybe at 1 or maybe 1 to 2%? So I think that will be the direction moving forward. In the meantime, do remember sign on our landed convention happening on 20th of May. And uh, it's going to be a full day of event that we have lined up for you. So this is going to be a sequence of events. It's going to be very exciting because we're going to interview, have Q&A sessions with uh, architects, builders, developers, as well as I'm going to give a market trend update on some very, very interesting statistics and research that our PRB research team has came up with on the landed trending for 2023. If you're hunting for a landed property this year or even maybe planning to go into it only end of this year or next year, this is going to be something that's very interesting for you because our developer partners is going to come down is going to be held at the hotel location. There's going to be music. There's going to be wine. There's going to be a live band as well. And uh, you'll be able to look at resale listings as well as brand new homes from landed developers. And we hope to see you there face to face. We're going to have a meet and chat session. And of course, for the first 50 sign up, if you're watching this NOTG episode, click on the link down below for early bird tickets because for early bird tickets, it's going to be very different from the later on tickets. And we hope to see you on that particular day where we can chat and you can also talk to our PLB lender consultants to ask any questions that you might have. We'll be there for the entire day to spend time with you and we hope to see you on that particular day. And of course, the tickets basically covers a lot of value because that's going to cover your parking as well as a glass of red wine with our partners. And we hope to see you there on the landed convention. And meantime, take care few quarter changes and if we just talk about sorry my leg is trapped <laughs> with the cable